This video provides general information only and is not intended to be legal advice. If you require legal advice, please speak to a lawyer. This video is for parties representing themselves in a commercial tenancies COVID-19 matter in the State Administrative Tribunal after the application has been filed and you have received a notice of listing. If your claim relates to a different type of matter, this video will not be relevant to your situation. I'm going to guide you through the process of what to expect in the initial hearing and if you attend a mediation. I will also give you general tips on how to conduct yourself. At the time of this video, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, tribunal hearings and mediations are being conducted by telephone wherever possible. As the restrictions are relaxed, the tribunal hearings and mediation may be held in person. This video covers both types of attendances, by telephone and in person. This is an example of a notice of listing. On the notice of listing, you will find the date and time of your hearing. If your hearing is in person, the location of your hearing will also be stated. Due to the current restrictions, it is likely that the tribunal hearings and mediation will be conducted by telephone or video conference. If you need an interpreter or other assistance, you must inform the tribunal as early as possible. You can do this using the contact details on the notice of listing. On the day of your hearing, make sure that you arrive early and are dressed in neat, smart clothing. If your hearing is by telephone, make sure your phone is fully charged and you are in a quiet location. If you are late or do not attend, the tribunal member can make orders in your absence, including making orders against you. It is difficult to estimate how long your hearing will take. It is best to leave aside at least two hours for your hearing and not make any commitments immediately afterwards. Some of the things you might want to bring or have with you are documents that are relevant to your matter. Have these in an organized format so that you can get to them easily. A list of witnesses you plan to call to give evidence. If you're physically attending the tribunal, be prepared to go through airport star security. Don't bring any sharp objects with you. You may need to remove your shoes, keys, belts, and electronic equipment, including your mobile phone. Do not smoke, eat, or chew gum in the building. Taking photographs or video recordings is also not allowed. The tribunal has a notice board which lists the location of each hearing. Check the board in case your hearing room details have changed. When you arrive at the tribunal room, the door may be locked. Let a tribunal officer know your name and your case number. Then take a seat outside the tribunal room. Your matter may not start exactly at the scheduled time, so please be patient and do not leave the area. The tribunal officer will call you into the hearing room when the tribunal member is ready to hear your matter. If your hearing is taking place by telephone, the tribunal will telephone you at the scheduled time. It will do so from a private number. Nadine Jones, Fenton Smith. If you are attending in person, make sure that your mobile phone is turned off before you enter the hearing room. Also remove any hats and sunglasses. When you enter the hearing room, it is proper etiquette to show respect to the authority of the tribunal you do this by bowing your head to the coat of arms behind the tribunal member. It symbolizes the administration of justice. If you are the applicant or the party that filed the application, take a seat on the right when facing the tribunal member. If you are the respondent or the party responding to the application, sit on the left when facing the tribunal member. If your hearing is by telephone, the tribunal member will introduce themselves and ask for your name to check that the correct people are attending the telephone hearing. The tribunal member may be a judge or a non-judicial officer. In either case, they are responsible for resolving your disputes. There may be one or more tribunal members responsible for resolving your disputes. The State Administrative Tribunal aims to decide all applications as efficiently and effectively as possible. Tribunal hearings are generally conducted with minimum formality. However, you should still show appropriate respect for the administration of justice. During the hearing, address the tribunal member as sir or madam. 
refer to the other party politely and do not interrupt them. Each of you will have an opportunity to speak. The first hearing is called a directions hearing. Its purpose is to decide whether the matter should be referred to mediation or listed for a final hearing, or whether other orders should be made. It is not to decide the matter. If the tribunal member decides that you might be able to resolve your matter through mediation, they will order you to attend mediation. Mediation is a structured discussion between the parties, facilitated by a trained mediator from the tribunal. There are many good reasons to try and resolve your dispute at mediation. For example, after a final hearing, the tribunal can only make specific orders, such as ordering the payment of money or ordering that the proceedings be dismissed. At a mediation, the parties can agree to other things, such as making an apology or agreeing not to post negative comments on social media. Also, preparing for a final hearing can be costly and time consuming. It takes time to prepare all the information needed. This includes time away from working or running your business, while you instead prepare for the hearing, attend the hearing and fill out paperwork. It is also important to know that agreeing to settle a dispute at mediation does not mean that you have lost. It can be another way to achieve the outcome you are seeking. Mediation is an opportunity for the parties to discuss the dispute to either try to resolve the matter or try to narrow the issues in dispute that go to a final hearing. At the first directions hearing, aside from making orders for mediation, the tribunal will usually order the applicant to file a document called a Statement of Issues, Facts and Contentions, as well as a list of the documents the applicant plans to rely on at the final hearing. The respondent then has 14 days to file their Statement of Issues, Facts and Contentions and a list of documents. The directions hearing may also involve working out how many witnesses each party has, and working out how long a final hearing might take. After the hearing, you will be sent a copy of the orders made by the tribunal. I will now explain what happens during a mediation. On the day of the mediation, the mediator will either telephone or collect you from the waiting area and take you to a mediation room. If your mediation is taking place by telephone or video conference, make sure your phone and laptop are fully charged and you are in a quiet location. The role of the mediator is to try to help the parties reach a settlement that is acceptable to everyone. The mediator cannot give legal advice. The mediator will start by introducing themselves. They will explain that the purpose of a mediation is to explore whether the parties can reach an agreement to settle your dispute. What you say in a mediation is confidential and all your discussions are without prejudice. That means that anything you say cannot be used by the other side against you if the matter goes to a final hearing. This is very important to encourage the parties to speak freely without being concerned that your statements will later be used against you. You can also keep notes of the discussion, but those notes may not be relied on in later proceedings or be shared with non-parties other than a lawyer. The mediator will usually then invite each party to briefly describe their issues, starting with the applicant and then the respondent. Refer to the other party politely and do not interrupt them. Each of you will have an opportunity to speak. To prepare for this, it is a good idea to write down a few bullet points of what you want to say. Try to stick to the main points of your argument and the key issues in dispute. Remember the reason the parties are attending mediation is to make a genuine attempt to settle the dispute. You are encouraged to have an open mind during the mediation discussion. If the parties cannot agree on a settlement, your matter will usually then be listed for another mediation or a final hearing. In light of the current economic circumstances, it may be in both parties' interests to attend another mediation. If the parties can reach a mutually acceptable outcome, this is often a better outcome for everyone than a decision imposed by the tribunal. You will receive notice in writing of the date, time and place of the next mediation or final hearing. We are not covering how to prepare for the final hearing in this video. If you reach an agreement, either in the mediation or at any other time, you should record the agreement in writing signed by all parties.
The mediator can assist with this. The agreement becomes a decision of the tribunal and can be enforced if the other party does not comply with it. We hope you found this video useful. It was created as a volunteer project by staff and former students of the John Curtin Law Clinic at Curtin University's Law School. If you need legal advice or assistance, you can contact the Law Society of Western Australia. If you're feeling anxious or depressed about your situation and need support, please contact Beyond Blue or Lifeline. Thank you for watching and we wish you all the best with your matter.